we're getting really close to, to leaving the Dominican Republic and heading for Puerto Rico. We're gonna try and wait for a big weather window, like a big cold front or something to pass through and uh, suppress the trade winds for a good three to five days. The way we can just go all the way to Puerto Rico and not have to stop again in DR. I think we'll certainly be back to the Dominican Republic. There's a great cruiser community here. The locals are, are very welcoming. We'll head back to the boat. We're gonna unpack all of our stuff. Then tonight we're heading to a pig roast with a bunch of friends. Yeah. That's a good size, big. Mm. It smells good, man. Oh yeah, dude, it's all, the skin's all crispy. <laughs> yeah, it is perfect. Yeah. Nice. Ah, you good? to finish maintenance on our main engine and we have to scale the mast to the dual rig inspection but we'll do that tomorrow you see here my uh, my engine log last time we changed the engine oil was at 12.58 in three hours uh, removed three quarts added three quarts which is really good uh, next oil change was supposed to be due at 1558 hours and a transmission fluid change at 1408 so I'm currently at 1420 hours. So the transmission is due. So I'm certainly gonna do that, but I'm also gonna change the main engine oil as well. I've got about 100 hours left that I can travel just over 100 hours, and that would be about halfway through Puerto Rico, and I don't wanna have to stop in Puerto Rico at some anchorage to change oil. So we're on the dock, so I'm gonna change the oil now. So I've removed three quarts, just over three quarts of oil. Now that the engine oil has been removed from the engine, I need to replace the oil filter. Hey, look at that. That worked. Also place a little bit of oil on the O-ring right here, right? And the reason you do that is when you go to tighten the new filter up, you don't want this O-ring to slip. You see how it slips like that? You want it to squeeze and not get bunched up and ca cause a leak. Screw it back on. Okay. Alright. Next step is going to be to change the fuel filter. So just a little plug on the top of the filter housing. Remove that and you can see down in there and you can see the fuel right up to the top of there. Now I should be able to remove this filter and have all the fuel that's in the filter not spill. Pour that fuel into the old, into the new filter and then screw it on. Let's hope that works. Otherwise we'll have diesel everywhere. <laughs> nope. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, because I'm using pliers. But I'm also damaging the filter. Like, you wouldn't want to leave this filter installed, no? There it is. Alright, so easy does it. Try not to spill diesel everywhere. Just and like, there it goes. Like that. <laughs> All right, ready? One, two, three. And spill. And just like that. And then screw this back on. So, so all I should have to do is pump that pump and I should be able to push fuel back up to the filter, fill the air gap that was left on that filter. Just give it a good 20, 30 pumps. Do it. Oh, yep, there it is. You see it coming out the top. Put the plug back on. Engine should fire right up. There's a noise that we've been hearing every time we put our boat in gear lately. I want to hear it from down here. I'm pretty sure it's just growth uh, that's around the prop and maybe around the cutlass bearing because we have a shaft that goes through a bracket, a P bracket, and then there's a prop after it. So I think it's just growth that's built up around that thing. But you hear that noise right there? I don't know what that is. It doesn't sound horrible. Okay, so I need you to, to start the engine. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's all ready to start. The keys are in the ignition. 
and then put just put the boat in gear you're gonna hear the prop start spinning count to 10 and then put it in neutral last routine maintenance item we have on our main engine is the transmission fluid. The oil is clean, so I just gotta remove the oil. Same method as we used for the main engine. Stick our little pump in there, pump it into the reservoir, and then refill it. And then our main engine is completely maintenance. Ready to go? Yeah, it should be ready to go. Two days. Cool deal. And then the last thing we gotta do before we leave here is, uh, aside from check out of the country, is on the boat is go up the mast. Next project for boat prep, passage prep, we are going to go up the mast for a few few reasons. One is to replace the VHF antenna. But for some reason we had a very short range on our VHF, so I'm going to install a new antenna. The other is to inspect all of the rigging to make sure that we don't have any issues in the rig. We're on a wire in the hailer horn that we installed in Pensacola, we never did connect the wiring for it. And the last one is to install another flag halyard so we can fly our flags. So it's going to be a long day up the mast today. It is, and it is very hot today. My climbing harness on. I've got a bosun's chair. So I've got a primary is a bosun's chair. Secondary is a climbing harness. So we'll use two halyards to hoist me up. That way if one, something happens with one, the second one is, is going to catch me. And then I'm also going to bring up camelback full of water make sure I stay hydrated and then Holly will be down here working the lines bringing various tools with me uh, one is a drill so I have to drill the I have to drill some rivets out for the old bracket and I have to drill holes to put the piece up to be able to put the flag halyard on and also a rivet gun this rivet gun dude this thing is, this thing is awesome. really cool rivet gun so it's electric fully electric uh, it's got a brand new charge on it it has all the all the different size fittings for all the different size rivets and yeah you don't have to sit there and crank and crank and crank and fight with a rivet gun this thing is amazing i'm tying my tools my heavy tools anything that's gonna rip and really damage i hurt somebody i'm tying them to the bosun's chair that way if i drop them they don't fall all the way down to the deck kill somebody all right so today we are up here mast on that the lower spreader and uh, I'm doing an inspection I'm installing a new flag halyard <laughs> I'm installing a new flag halyard so we can fly our uh, our Acadian flag and our American flag uh, legally on our port side spreader we have uh, with some entertainment back there the Dominicans are enjoying their afternoon playing a bunch of music for us Sounds like he's happy. I don't know if he's I don't know if he's happy or if he's like in distress. I really can't tell, to be honest with you. Alright, here we go. Alright, babe. I'm gonna drop this down to you. There's our antenna. This dude right here. Little bitty antenna is just not cutting it. It's just not doing the job, so I need to replace that. Bit more. A little more. A little more. A little more. All right. There. Alright, 
so this morning we're back on the boat and I'm gonna work on some rig tuning today the manual for our boat is very vague but Sheldon has a lot has a really good white paper on rig tuning and they give you a lot of really good suggestions and they even have the type of rig and mass that we have in there in their white paper so I'm gonna follow the instructions on that paper because Sheldon is a very reputable company and I would have to think they know what they're doing since they do build mast and rigging and spars and all kinds of hardware. So this is the, this is the cap shroud. So it's a continuous wire that goes all the way down to this spreader, right? So uh, this spreader basically just holds the angle and then it attaches up at the top of the mast. So one of the things that I'm supposed to be able to do on this boat is tension the cap shroud. But discontinuous rig, there's no turnbuckle to be able to tension our cap shrouds on this boat. I'm not sure what to think about that or what to do about that. To be honest with you, I can't, I cannot tension the cap shroud on our boat. I'm thinking that tensioning the, the main shroud, not the intermediate shroud, tensioning this main outside shroud is what's going to allow me to apply some tension to that cap shroud. So basically I'm thinking I can pull this spreader down some to apply more tension up top. And in order to do that, I'm gonna need to loosen this guy, that turnbuckle right here. Apply tension down on the uh, turnbuckle down at the bottom, right down here, to pull this spreader down just a little bit to be able to tension the cap shroud. That's the only way I can see to tension the cap shroud on this boat. So uh, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So first things first, I'm gonna loosen the rig. <coughs> okay, so I've gone through and I have loosened all of the turnbuckles on our rig, everything but the backstay. The backstay was already really loose. So, uh, so I loosen the outside shroud and then the intermediate shroud on the uh, port side and on the starboard side, which is over there. I've also gone through, gone up the rig, and I've loosened the intermediate turnbuckle here at the lower shroud <coughs> on both sides. So now, whenever I go through and I tighten this main shroud right here, not the intermediate, the outside shroud, the main shroud, the lower spreaders will actually be able to lower, to actually move down because that intermediate is loose, which will in turn apply tension to the cap shroud on both sides. So that's the only way to tension the cap shroud on this boat is by actually physically moving that lower spreader up or down a little bit. I don't know why they don't have a turnbuckle on the cap shroud this rig, but we don't. So uh, this is our option. This is what we're going to do. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to tighten these guys now. Loosening the upper intermediate shrouds and tightening the outboard main shrouds on both port and starboard side at even increments, I was able to properly tension our rig from the cap shroud all the way down to the deck. We also tensioned the back stay to properly tension the fore stay and achieve the proper rake on the mast. All right, next step is going to be to side up the mast and make sure the mast is still nice and straight, laterally straight. Let's take a look at that. It looks straight from this angle. I'm gonna get closer to it and really side up. So now that our boat is finally at the point where she starts to pass it to all the maintenance and everything's done, I am now beginning to look at weather windows. We are right there, right at the top of the DR, that little bitty spot right there. See where the mouse is? And we're going to head to Puerto Rico, the west coast of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rio, there's a little bitty bay called Puerto Rio, right here. It's a little bitty bay. Uh, it's about 260 nautical miles, and as you can see, we are in the trade winds. The trade winds just pump through this area. We're going to need a very good weather window, and the only thing that's going to really give us a good weather window is a big cold front. You can see right here, some uh, the winds are starting to change direction. It goes really calm. But this window doesn't stay for long enough. I mean, we need we need to get three days, a good solid three days. This one's like two. Yeah, it's just shy of two days, so it's not quite what we're looking for. So unfortunately, this is not our weather window. It's what it is. It's uh, it's just part of the game. We have everything ready on the boat. So now it's just a waiting game. It's like a two-week cycle right now. We're getting big systems coming through every two weeks, and they've really just started. If we have a right, the right weather window, we should be able to do it in like three. Two and a half days to three days. We're, uh, we're here, we got everything ready. We have no more obligations here in the DR. Uh, all we have to do is pay wait. our overstay fee and get out of here. Just wait on the weather, huh? Yeah, just wait on the weather. So we're just waiting. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen very soon too. 